Tuesday, July 11th, 2023, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at repatriation today. Yes, central bank gold repatriation and the importance of it, in my opinion. Before I start, I'd like to thank all of you again for your interest in the channel. Make sure uh, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet that you do, make sure you hit that little notification bell uh, to be notified of all my videos. Uh, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy my videos. And yes, share it with other like-minded people. So gold repatriation, why, why is that so important? Well, I'm going to start looking into the stock market, which sounds uh, strange. But uh, many of you know that in the stock market, if you want to sell a, a stock short, you have to borrow it. So you go to the stockbroker and, and you tell him, I want to sell IBM short. He will go to another client and he will uh, lease those shares, who borrowed those shares. And then with those shares borrowed, leased, you can go and, and sell them for a period of time. So you have to uh, borrow uh, the shares to sell them short. And the same thing happens with gold. Uh, and it's been happening for, for decades. And it's been abused, especially in the city of London through the LBMA, but also through the COMEX uh, in New York. They work together. And I've spoken about this many times. I even have a precious metals manipulation playlist, which you can look into. I also rec recommend GATA.org. They've been looking at this since the late 90s. GATA.org. It's gold. It's called, it stands for Gold Antitrust Action Committee. And um, yes, uh, what the uh, central banks in London and New York, i.e. Uh, the Bank of England and the New York Fed do, they lease their gold to the bullion banks, and uh, especially in London, they, they lease it many times over there. It's called uh, hypothecation, and they, they do it even, uh, even something called rehypothecation. They lend it many times over. Uh, there's no limit in the city of London. You, you can have a ton of, of gold, and the Bank of England will lend it as 100 tons. So that will allow J.P. Morgan, uh, Barclays, uh, any bullion bank to go out there and sell uh, gold that they've borrowed. And, and a lot of it is gold that doesn't exist. The people uh, who bought that uh, unallocated gold in, in a lot of instance, instances, why unallocated? Well, unallocated means that uh, they're basically looking just to to play the price of gold not to really own it and they don't have um like uh ownership of a, a specific bar it's not allocated so when that happens of course it artificially uh moves the price around because if you can rehypothecate many tons of gold um, it will affect the, the price and the COMEX and the LBMA players. They're all uh, one and the same in New York. Uh, the New York Fed also leases its gold, not its gold. And that, we're going to look into that as well, because it's not the Bank of England uh, gold or uh, the New York Fed's gold. Uh, so they lease it uh, maybe two, three times. It, it's not as rehypothecated. So London really is the center uh, of the manipulation, I would say. And it's normal because London is the uh, foreign exchange center of the world. And gold and silver are traded as currencies, of course. I've spoken about this. The old uh, Reuters page, FXFX which I learned of when I started out in the late 80s at a small private bank in Switzerland. It quotes XAU, USD, and XAG, and all the major uh, fiat currencies as well. 
I'm not sure if it's still there, that page, FX, FX. The Bank of England uh, <laughs> holds over 5,000 tons of gold. And most of it, of course, is for other central banks, for other maybe sovereign wealth funds. Uh, the UK itself only has 300 tons. And the New York Fed as well. Uh, a lot of that gold there is held for other countries. And we have seen gold repatriation happening actually in the last uh, 8 to 10 years. And we're going to look into that. Well, actually more than 10 years and, and the impact it has on the price and why. So the Bank of England actually keeps gold statistics. And you can see here that uh, ever since the, uh, yeah, let's see, end of 2021, beginning of 22, the Bank of England's uh, gold holdings have dropped significantly. And they are at uh, more than three-year lows. They've dropped about 12% from the top in September of 2021. And it seems to have accelerated um, since uh, March last year, which makes sense, of course. A and why is that? Well, because this has com come out. It came out yesterday and it came out on Reuters, but uh, I also saw it come out uh, in the FT and I'm gonna take the FT article. So we're gonna go through it and see what the FT says. And I have to say, this is encouraging, uh, for me at least, because a lot of times I've uh, asked, uh, well, made, asked the question, why do these central banks want to keep their gold with the Bank of England or the New York Fed? It doesn't make sense. And it looks like they're waking up to that. Uh, and there's proof in the past that uh, you can't trust, uh, especially the Bank of England, and it's in this book here that... Uh, the Tower of Basel about the BIS. And there's a chapter in here, chapter five, um, entitled An Authorized Plunder. Basically tells you how the Bank of England and the BIS allowed uh, the Germans to basically steal Czechoslovak gold back in 1938 when Germany invaded uh, Czechoslovakia. So... There you go. So back to the article. Central banks move gold back home after freeze on Russian assets. And, and I have to say the, the move in the Bank of England gold holdings kind of uh, points to that. S uh, sovereign investors concerned about the precedent of sanctions prefer the physical metal to derivatives or ETFs, of course. Derivatives and ETFs are only a promise. <laughs> and uh, if the people who write these derivatives and ETFs, i.e. the bullion banks that work with the central banks and the governments, uh, they can break that promise any time. That's why I've always said, get physical. <laughs> Even before the silver squeeze, uh, I always said you need to have physical. So a growing number of countries are bringing their physical gold reserves back home to avoid Russian-style sanctions on their foreign assets while increasing their purchases of the precious metal as a hedge against high levels of inflation. And of course, there's the talk <laughs> that uh, there's going to be uh, some kind of uh, gold-backed system from the BRICS. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it looks like it's real. It it's almost uh, feels like... Uh, unbelievable <laughs> that after 50 years it's finally going to come back into the system and that's another story but it's kind of related to this because if you're going to have uh, a trade trading system where gold is uh, used you, you want to have your, your gold at home really central banks globally made record purchases of gold in 2022 we've looked into that and into the first quarter of this year as they hunted for sa safe havens from high inflation and volatile bond prices, according to a survey of so sovereign investors by asset manager Invesco. China and Turkey together accounted for almost one-fifth of these purchases. Concerned by the decision of the U.S. and others to freeze Russian assets, central banks 
opted to buy physical gold rather than derivatives or exchange traded funds that track the metals price. They also prefer to hold it, hold it in their own country as global tensions increased. Invesco's survey found that 68% of central banks held part of their gold reserves domestically, up from 50% in 2020. In five years, that figure is expected to rise to 74%, the survey showed. I would venture to say that it might even increase quicker uh, and to a bigger degree, but anyway... I'm going to stop here, really, because that's all we need to know. And I'm going to put a link to this uh, FT article in the description. You don't have to subscribe. I'm going to put it under archive.ph. So now I'm going to explain to you why, why I think this could be very significant for the price of gold. Is it the reason why I bought gold over or stacked gold or silver over the last... 20 years plus, partly because I've known about this uh, price suppression from, uh, yeah, for a very long time, excuse me, uh, because I was aware of GATA and the work that they did, and I could, could sense that there was price manipulation in the gold market uh, every day, really. So I always thought that when this price manipulation uh ended that the pri prices could rise quite a lot more than people could imagine because they've basically been selling gold that they don't have through through this leasing scheme just like a uh, shorting um, uh, stocks right but now uh if a lot of these countries are moving their gold back home, it will mean that uh, the Bank of England and the New York Fed will not have as much gold to lease. I, I know can, they can basically lie about it, but uh, the, uh, the risk with that is that someone actually uh, goes from unallocated to allocated and demands delivery. And if they can't deliver, they go bust. So there is the danger of that. So they're going to have to be a lot more careful. The bullion banks as well won't be able to do it as much. And uh, I think uh, gold repatriation in the past is shown <laughs> that uh, it leads to uh, it, it can lead to a sharp price rises, especially back in uh, 2011. Um, and what happened in 2011? Well, that pesky country, <laughs> Venezuela, under Hugo Chavez, uh, demanded uh, that the Bank of England sent, uh, send 160 tons of their gold uh, back to Caracas from London. And that was in August 2011. And we know what happened to the price of gold that summer. It went from, in 2011, it, it reached, uh, yeah, an all-time high. At uh, just above 1900, it was trading uh, around uh, just below 1500 the beginning of the year. And then you have Hugo Chavez demanding delivery. So here, here's the uh, story here. It's on Wikipedia even. Uh, before 2012, the Central Bank of Venezuela uh, held about 211 tons of its 365 tons of gold reserves in American, European, Canadian banks. In January 2012, however, Venezuela completed the move of uh, 160 uh, tons of gold back home. The operation was ordered by Hugo Chavez in August 2011 and was overseen by Central Bank Chair Nelson Marentes. In early November 2018, well, yeah, there's another story about 2018 that Venezuela wanted another 14 tons, and now the, the UK has blocked it, but that's a different story. But my speculation uh, at the time was that um, these 160 tons uh, they were moved very quickly uh, from, you know, they were in Venezuela in less than six months. He, he, he asked for the delivery in August of 2011 and it was in Venice and arrived in Caracas 
in January of 2012. So it's very quick. And I would say they knew, the Bank of India knew before August that something like that was going to happen. So what did they have? Why did the price go up, in my opinion? Yes, there was the debt ceiling crisis in the U.S. going on. But I think this uh, helped the price higher. Well, because a lot of these... Uh, tonnage uh, a lot of this tonnage that the bank of England keeps they lease it many times over so if someone comes and says i want 160 tons and it's an unusual move because they just leave it there all the time uh they uh they'll have to close a lot of their uh leases and that will uh lead to the bullion banks having to cover a lot of their shorts and we don't know how rehypothecated the Bank of England was. And I think that was one of the reasons gold went up so, so much. And uh, the Bank of England, of course, learned from that and the New York Fed. And that's why when Germany uh, demanded repatriation in 2013, it took until 2016 <laughs> uh, to get it uh, to Germany from the New York Fed. Uh, if you read here, uh, they, t they say that there was uh, logistical difficulties, but uh, uh, they wanted to repatriate uh, 300 tons from the New York Fed. They had 1,500 tons uh, at the New York Fed, and it took thir three years to do it, maybe even more. And why? Well, because if they had sent um, the gold... Uh, very quickly to uh, to Germany, it meant they'd have to close a lot of the shorts and it would have driven the price higher again. That's the, the way I see it. And that's why I, I think uh, the move to uh, towards uh, repatriation of central bank gold or even sovereign wealth uh, gold could really uh, be uh, the nail uh, in the coffin of the uh, London, New York suppression scheme, because if they don't have the physical gold, it gets very risky. Uh, am I saying uh, the Bank of England uh, and the New York Fed are going to be cleaned out of their clients' gold right away? No, but I, I think it's something that uh, is a trend now. And we saw there by the uh, chart of the uh, Bank of England gold holdings. So, yes. The BRICS announcement, and it's not official, <laughs> so there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty, I would say. The BRICS announcement is important, but I think this could be even more important because, yeah, it could end the paper game. Uh, and uh, hopefully other central bankers out there, uh, not just in the uh, global south or emerging markets, will learn the lesson and move most or a big chunk of their gold back home. Why do they need it in London uh, or New York? Uh, it doesn't make any sense at all. And can you really trust uh, the Bank of England or the Fed? I personally don't think so. So with that, um, let's quickly look at uh, where the markets are this morning. It's uh, just gone past uh, 8.15 uh, London time. So we've got spot gold trading at 1931. It's up $6. Uh, the high's been 38 actually. So gold seems to be picking up a little bit. <laughs> is that because of this story? No, this is something that will be, will not like happen overnight, but I think it's uh, important, of course. Low has been 24. Silver is up 14 cents at 23.26. High's been 2340. Uh, the Dow, Dow futures up 10. NASDAQ future is up 31. SP up 5. To the currencies, uh, sterling is up uh, 0.2 of a percent at uh, 128.90. Uh, the euro is up slightly at just above 110. And the dollar is down a third of a percent versus the yen at 140.81. Uh, dollars down the third versus the U1 at 720.50. Aussie dollar is unchanged, 66.77. Uh, 
Uh, dollar is down an eighth of a percent versus the Canadian dollar at 132.60. Uh, let's look at the uh, Kiwi dollar. Kiwi dollar is down a quarter of a percent, 61.95. To the general commodities, uh, WTI crude is up half a percent, 73.40. Uh, Brent is up half a percent, trading at 78. So crude oil creeping up. Uh, Platinum is up two and a half dollars at 935. High grade copper is up three quarters of a percent at 381.50. We'll finish off with the uh, gilt market and the treasury market. The two year gilt yield is up five basis points at uh, 542. The 10 year is up uh, four at 467. Yields seem to uh, have uh, kind of moderated for now. Rising yields, of course, are not good. <laughs> that means bond prices go down. That means mortgage rates go higher and the cost of funding the government goes higher too. Let's look at the uh, US uh, bond market or treasury market, the 10-year yield is back below 4%. It's down three basis points at 397. So there's going to be a little bit of a struggle there around 4%, but I think it's still going to go higher in the medium to long term. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.